morning everybody Matt back with you a bit of a wild and woolly day in Bradford today we've come to have a look around Undercliff Cemetery and we have been here before but quite a long time ago we've never done a like a tour of the grounds and this is a Victorian era cemetery that sits on a hill overlooking the city of Bradford and what we're going to do today is we're going to have a walk around we're going to have a look at some of the graves that are here there's no specific story to film uh, but just have a look at some of the graves of the rich and famous from Bradford's Victorian era so the cemetery was created between 1851 and 1854 and like a lot of big cemeteries there were chapels so the cemetery is cut into four sections one side the western side was for anglican burials the eastern side was for what we would class as non-conformists, Methodists, etc. The northern side was for unbaptized people, often children, but also people who'd committed suicides. And then to the south were the communal graves, where you could have one lot and potentially have up to 30 people buried in them. So there are officially 23,000 graves here with 124,000 people buried here. Now when we mentioned about the rich and the famous we're not talking about uh, celebrities as such we're talking about Victorian era famous people in Bradford so mill owners, mayors and MPs and quite often they would build themselves a lot um, like a mausoleum and things like that uh, and of course it was all about one-upsmanship <laughs> whose grave would look better in the end and because of that there are some fantastic um, structures here in the graveyard uh, generally for people who were mayors and MPs and mill owners and even today there are a number of grade 2 listed uh, gravestones just in the cemetery but like I say we're not particularly looking at anything specific it is just a look around at structures today and also I think we'll give you a little sneak preview of a coming up video in two weeks time so I guess this is the northern side uh, these are family plots of sadly children and yeah all children of course you've got to remember no no not all children at all um, but obviously these are very different too you can see in the distance. Now if you ever visit here um, a lot of the gravestones have QR codes. If I film any closer the camera will just stop and it will go to that site. Uh, but it's a good way of getting info on some of the people who are here. Imagine people from Victorian times walking around here and when you get to the end the views of Bradford. Look at 
this one. This is the family Holden. So this could be for Isaac Holden. Um, although there's no QR code, which I would have thought there would be if it was his. Uh, Isaac Holden, of course, an inventor. And we've talked about him on our video at uh, Oakworth. Where Oakworth Mansion was in the park. He owned that. Yeah, fascinating. And right next to it, family Berens, Berens perhaps. Sir Jacob Berens. This huge one, which is these are so big, I can't get them all on camera. Uh, Robert Milligan Esquire uh, from Scotland. This was the tomb of the first mayor of Bradford, 1847. Oh, let's head down a section. So we're just going to reach the Illingworth family vault and this one is quite special and if you look up the pictures of Undercliff Cemetery this is the one that you'll see. It's an uh, extraordinary tomb which even has its own sphinxes. So the Illingworths were mill owners. There is a very Quite a difference with um, cultures here because you've got the sphinxes outside, which would obviously be Egyptian, and then above it, above the name, you've got the winged serpents, which is obviously from South America, Aztec culture. Of course, you've got to remember the Victorian era was all about exploration and things like the Egyptian civilization, uncovering you know, Tutankhamun's tomb, bringing things back from wherever the explorers were all across the world back to England. And uh, yeah, <laughs> happened quite a lot. We uh, probably shouldn't have done it back then. And it's a good reason for people to now be asking for things back. Uh, but that's why I think there will be these different cultures outside this tomb. And next to it, now this, this one is the tomb of Isaac Holden. Look at this. thing to mention with this gravestone as well uh, is its appearance in a certain film and it hasn't really changed much apart from I think back in the 60s this wasn't the door uh, it appears in Billy Liar back in 1963 a very famous film mostly filmed in Bradford and that is our sneak preview of what's coming up in a couple of weeks we're gonna go and look at the Bradford locations of Billy Liar but we can start with this one right now Listen to this. With you, dearest mother and darling dad, happy were the years we had, and it is comfort in our pain you are now together again. Isn't that nice? Charming. Oh, oh, Billy, look. Oh, oh there's a whole family in there. Oh, 
I think it's sweet. Fabulous. Ah, mm. oh, they're all dead. What a shame. Wally? Mm hmm? How do you feel? Ah, oh, contented. Uh, you don't feel, you know, restless? No. Barbara, mm -hmm. do you think it's wrong for people to have, uh, you know, uh, feelings? Not if they genuinely love each other. Like we do. Uh, yes. What do you think it's wrong of me to have the feelings? Well, I think we ought to be married first. During the 60s and 70s, things changed and cremation suddenly became a more popular form of end of life disposal, for want of a better word. And burials kind of started to become on the wane. And that's when this cemetery hit a period of uncertainty. And a property developer actually bought the site, I think in the late 70s. And I don't know quite what work was going to happen, but both chapels uh, were demolished. And it was only in 1984 uh, that Bradford Council stepped in and took over. And as you can imagine, this place was probably very run down uh, for a while. Uh, but there is one of those, like a lot of these graveyards that exist today, they have no council money, they have money from they're volunteers rather than money and so I think there's like a friends of um, Undercliff Cemetery who help uh, come in and look after it um, it is absolutely amazing the, you know you just look at one structure and if you were in a graveyard that would take your attention but there are so many similar in one graveyard you end up walking past them uh, and not seeing them because your eyes are immediately distracted by something else. It's just like walking past a row of giants. Right, let's look at some over this side. So this Egyptian monolith is, well, an obelisk, isn't it really? It has a face on it. That is the face of William Orson Cole architect of Bradford. Mawson designed St George's Hall in Bradford Town Centre, which is the oldest concert hall in the UK. He also designed Salt Air, and the Town Hall. These huge buildings across Bradford are there because Mr. Mawson. Look at this one. Well, William Wagstaff Barlow, Barlow family. I wonder if this is a sculpture of the people buried in the side. But every grave has a story, of course. Look at this one. Here lie the bodies of four brothers, the loving and beloved children of Robert Smith, station master, and Harriet, his wife, who were all cut off within one week. That's crazy, look at this. Died August 3rd, 1880, August 10th, August 8th, August 3rd. Wow. I'm 
actually not all the graves are out in the open some are in the undergrowth so let's just have a wander and see who's down here So it is a bit of a slippy, muddy mess down amongst the trees. Uh, so I've come back out for now. <laughs> so now some more tree filled. In the view of Redford. So, although we mentioned that Billy Liar was filmed, it has been used for uh, other things as well. Listed is Monty Python's Meaning of Life. Um, a quick whiz through it, I couldn't find any locations here. What I have found though. Is Peaky Blinders was filmed here in 2013 14. Uh, so I'm not going to try and line up those clips, uh, but there's a couple of screenshots here. Stone tells a story. Look at this one. John Atlay Gibson, late proprietor of the Bradford Laundry. I can only presume business was good back then. So I'm not going to spend too much longer here um, because obviously I don't have any specific stories to tell and uh, get a bit samey but you can see here that it is still used as a burial ground as well not too sure where the chapel stood Amazing. Well, see, I initially thought maybe this is where a chapel stood, but just more graves. We're back in the undergrowth again, looking amongst the grass and Fascinating ones to look at. Uh, let's have a look here. Well, so as you walk around, you can see there's a lot of work going on all over the cemetery. And, yeah, fair play to everybody who works here. Uh, that must be a huge job to keep it walkable and everything else and for cutting back trees. Uh, yeah, I do a tiny bit at Christchurch in Todmorden. Just look after two or three graves. That's quite hard work, so what did I say there was here? Thousands, thousands of graves. 
amazing. Another huge one here. Thomas Holdsworth, retired boiler maker. Stuff merchant. Stuff mer what's a stuff merchant? Another stuff merchant. I have something to learn here. We find ourselves back at the start. So there we go folks, that is our look at Undercliff Cemetery. Just a quick walk through, look at a couple of spots, but you now potentially hours and hours and hours of <laughs> research needed. Uh, to find the stories of these people. Now, somebody I know has done research here. Um, their YouTube channel, check it out, Bradford Through the Lens, they've covered a few stories from not only Undercliff Cemetery, but different cemeteries across Bradford. Uh, their channel is specifically Bradford, so um, yeah, some interesting ones. I even think, top of my head now, I think they may have covered what happened to those four children who died in a week. Um, there are other things here definitely uh, so do look at their channel but yeah that'll do for us so a uh, very quick thank you uh, because I've just hit thousand subscribers as well for the first time and things have really started speeding up since Christmas um, so whether or not I've suddenly got better at making these videos I don't know <laughs> but they seem a bit more popular at the minute and I'm very very grateful if you subscribe if you watch don't forget keep subscribing if you haven't already um, like share make some comments about what's here um, if there's things you don't like let me know what it is so it's a boring costume today <laughs> But next week we're in Whitby and I'll make up for it. We've got the story of Dracula in Whitby to come and we're also two weeks time doing the Billy Liar locations. So lots coming up. Thanks again guys. We will see you very soon. Take care.